my goodness, hi. <laughs> Thank you for clicking on this video. Oh, I just finished cleaning that little bit of lecker from the Gulf Green Hair Pig Repot and it took me three hours. That little bit of lecker, wow, was it dirty and all the roots were attached and oh my goodness. Ah, right, and it is actually time for me to do a walkabout with the orchids and have a look-see. So what I'm going to do is take you along, just indoors, because otherwise it's going to take too long. We shall see. Ooh, I am exhausted. <laughs> oh, that green hair pig took it out of me. Right, so here, Crestwood, tomorrow's star. Still going really strong, which is superb. Oh, now that I look at it, maybe not as superb starting to yellow at the sepals there. Oh, why? That was quick. Oh, well, first time bloomer. Maybe some of the conditions aren't quite right. And what is that little spot in the back? Let's have a look-see. Saw a shadow, looking at it from the front. Always mindful of possible mealybugs, but I don't see anything. It's probably just the happy sap. I don't see anything. That was a happy sap shadow. But always mindful. I'm always, always looking. Temperatures are warming up. And this is what I do in the afternoon. And there is a mealybug in there. Okay. We are going to take care of that straight away. So yeah, this is what I do. Late afternoon, just go around again and have another look-see. And let's have a look at my little blooming alley here. Mesovola subulifolia, still going strong. Super long lasting bloom. I love, them. I love them. And so is Matrix Alex Poli. Still magnificent. All three spikes are open now. And I did the treatment with the garlic and the alcohol. So we wait and see. And then here we still have a beautiful Murasaki Komachi. If I can get that to focus, I'm so sorry. I'm shaking a bit because that was hard work with the lecker. Ah, they're gorgeous. They took forever to open. Let's see how long they last. Very, very beautiful. A slight fragrance on these guys. I can't smell a lot, but the orchid has come through a lot with me in the past two and a half years, so maybe there's that to take into consideration. And Roy Tokonaga right next door is looking amazing. Very difficult to film. I find them super difficult to film, especially if you've got shaky hands. Not a good thing. Not a good thing. So they show up a little bit yellow. Day. Maybe because I've got the light on, let's switch the light off. Nah, that was a fail. Oh well, so Roy Tokonaga is coming on really nicely. So we've got lots of beautiful shapes, colors, and funky, funky little dots. Weird bloom. This is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. Waiting for this one. I lost one bud. Unfortunately, and the other angle of the Blooming Alley, I've still got my Epicat Leo Rene Marquez there in bloom. First bloom is starting to go over. It's been out for ages. And this is crossed with um, Potidara Free Spirit. I still have my Aurora 2.0. And I've only just uh, watered her soaked her again in some cow mag and seaweed for the third time since she's been with me. No repotting happening just yet, waiting for some root action. I find that when I have the light on the camera, the focusing doesn't work as well. My three stooges, still hanging out. <laughs> They're looking amazing. I love it. I love them. I love the longevity of these blooms. They give me a lot, a lot of smiles as I walk by. And here is Siamese Gold Kiwi. Can I get at you? Prop 
hopefully. There we go. Two blooms and it's the first time. And she opened yellow this time. I never saw the kiwi in her. There was no green and then turned to yellow. She just opened yellow. Very, very beautiful. So pleased. I can't believe that a winter growth would produce blooms. Excellent, love it. Let me go down here to my bossery and great bossery. The flowers are now going over. They have had their time and it was very, very quick. So they look very yellow on screen. But that is because of the light, the flashlight. They're a bit more of a creamy nature now, like a baby yellow, not as bright canary yellow as you can see here. What a shame they didn't last long at all. But I'm not going to cut the spikes off. I want to see what these little buds in the back here, what are they about? Are they going to do anything? I don't know. I'd like to see if something weird opens. But super interesting to observe. And while we're here, that's my little and break bidieri. And even though it's hard to see, because it's so tiny, there's a spike coming out up in the corner there by that silver root. There's a spike. That would be a first time bloomer. And I love these metallic roots. They're really, really enjoying the orchid top now. Really going to town. Yay, Didieri. Let me go and back up a little bit here. And down here, I have scattered ICU candidates, but Harpophila is also still not open. Waiting for it though, the buds are now showing their orange color. And that's something I'm really looking forward to. Very excited. It was not a strong orchid when I got her. And I would not let her bloom, but the roots are in abundance in that pot. So she is strong enough to be able to handle it. All right, let me go up another level. My two Brassavola digbiana growths are now showing their buds. And suddenly they are there. And look at how beautiful that glaucus effect is on those growths. I love that. And the sheets are magnificent as well. Look at that. Oh, super impressive. First time to get two blooms. Very, very, very happy about that. I know I sound exhausted, even to myself. Sorry. <laughs> Who'd have thought Leko could do that to you? Here's um, Jack of Diamonds spike coming along really, really nicely. And I can say that this is probably going to be male blooms as I had female blooms before because that spike is nothing of the structure and texture of what the other spike was when the female blooms developed. It's much more finer and refined, not so bulky and in your face, aggressive, thick, you know. So that's coming along really nicely. And then here you can see the sheath of the Caplia Intermedia variety of Quinny. See the buds are starting to make that sheet look chubby. First time bloomer as well. And along my little front here, all my little guys, Arengus festuosa, spike, plural, <laughs> are coming along well. Still watching, still watching the edge of the pot there making sure that they are not going to have any problems with opening. And if I have to lift them up a little bit, I will. You can see how quickly this one developed. The one on the left took forever. But this one, once it showed, it was like, oh, I've got to catch up. I got to catch up. And it's already showing buds. Fantastic. Really got to watch that one up against the pot there. And here are all my little babies. Cattleya Maxima Cerula that I got from the Orchid Room, Melissa Walker and Michael McCarthy. Starting a new growth. 
that's exactly the key. My Lelia Crispa here is still not pot bound after a year. And although it has matured this growth that is, as you can see right here, now I'm waiting for its roots to come. So that's alrighty, alrighty. At least it's something. It's matured that growth for forever. And then here is my Catlia Leopoldii cross. Very, very difficult to keep this one going, but I'm loving the fact that it's putting out roots. So that really pleases me. Quick update on the division of the Procatavola golden peacock. There is no sign of activity at the base and one leaf is being absorbed. But other than that, I'm hopeful because the mother plant is already throwing out new growth. So I'm not, see I'm not concerned that this one's going to be in any way a problem to get established and then ready for shipping. And then here's the Dawiana variety Aurea, also from the Orchid Room, Melissa Walker, and Michael McCarthy. All right, it's doing all right. It's swelling a little growth at the base there. Very tiny, you can hardly see it, but it's starting to do something as well. And here I'm really pleased to say that my Sobenicofia Umbertiana is really chugging along now. Look at that root that has come. That's a second root and it's all the way down in the orchid top now, just there. Very happy about that. 2020 was like, what am I doing with this orchid? And I never got the setup right. And then I got myself this orchid top for it. And it pushed out this new root, which is not looking too healthy, but I do wipe it down with cotton swab and stuff in order to make sure that I can not have that salt build up on the root. So that is always a task but it's okay. And I only thought I had that root until recently I saw what I'm seeing here now. A happy root in the environment that I want it to be in. So even if the other one fails, we've got one. And now it's just a question of keeping it pest free and working to get it into a big, big orchid. Looking forward to that. Let me go down one more level and show you the Didieri from the other side. Also doing really well in Orchid Top. Now you, now you can maybe see the spike a little bit better. I'm sorry for my nail. Oh my goodness, I didn't realize how much the lecker was affecting my hands. I'm, I apologize. It looks nasty. There you see my spike. And then I have my Lectromenthus caudatus right here. I've sprayed it down with some copper fungicide just to make sure that I keep these black spots in check. It's doing okay. It's growing the roots in the pot. It's doing okay. That was a touch and go last year. Here's my Kyoguchi Happy Field. That spike is developing really, really well. Pleased about that. And little Renanthera Monachica here. Is growing, is growing, is enjoying that environment. And look at that, she's in spike. I only just saw that right now. To my understanding, it wasn't there this morning. Woohoo! And that root, that's a good root. That's a good root. It's not sticking straight out, it's going into the saucer. Para mí, muy importante. Yes, sir. And then here's another little Leonis that's been in spike for ages, but I've never managed to get a bloom out of it. And it's decided to just grow bigger and start with another leaf instead. I haven't cut the spike off just because while it's there, we'll see what it does. I lost a bud there on the left, as you can see. And my little Lundii. So cute. Considering they're so small, they last a long time. I've lost a bud, but no, 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 they're long lasting considering they're so tiny. 
All right, let's go down another shelf. And here my little seedling Catlia crosses. I'm getting new growth. They've been with me the longest. And I'll pull them out one day and we'll do a video on those. I'm still stubborn on my twinkle. White fantasy. I'm gonna stick to my guns here. And then here is a little keiki of the hibiki that we took off and put into Akadama and it's growing a new growth. Sorry, that's the neighbor's dog. My apologies. So new growth coming there. Very pleased about that. My two Richara Francis Fox. Oh, this is the first piece I ever got and it is finally showing signs of it's going to bloom. Very, very happy. What a fight it's been about that. Anybody interested in Richara Francis Fox Care Collab? Please, please make a note of that in the comments below. I would love to make a Care Collab on these two pieces because of everything that I've been through and experienced, etc. But I'd like to take everybody along for the ride. Who has a Richara Francis Fox? So let me know. Let's get this Care Collab sorted. I don't have to wait for my blooms. I'll do it anyway. I still have the buds on my Epidendrum Embrain, crossed with Capricornum. I lost one, but that would be a first time bloomer if it makes it. And I have four spikes on an Oncidium No ID. Bloom is starting to open here, but oh boy, the fragrance of this one. It was a rescue many years ago, and it doesn't look very pretty. The blooms are, oh, so la la, but the fragrance is incredible. So that is for me a keeper just because of the fragrance. It's delicious. I'll have to re-describe it when I do a blooms for you on her because I don't remember exactly how to pinpoint the fragrance. I'll have to smell it again, and then I will let you know. But the fact that I remember it for being so delicious, I'm keeping this orchid for that. My area hyacinthoides is looking really worse for wear with the dried leaf tips. That is my environment, and but the growths, again, are going nuts. So this is the second flush of growths since 2020 ended so she had some winter growths maturing two or three and now she's starting again with another flush of new growths it's not the most prettiest orchid but boy is she vigorous in growing and then the blooms will come eventually one after the other and I have to be very very mindful of the mealy bugs on this one as well and there's one in there which I will deal with either like this or I'll go down there with some alcohol. So that's my area hyacinthoid is just chugging away, very thirsty. And I've got my American hybrid here, still looking magnificent. Oh my goodness, these blooms and the softness of the spikes. The, this is waxy and the top is velvety. It's just the structures and textures of this bloom is insane. Absolutely insane. And then you get all this sparkly nonsense going on right in the middle there. And that boop right there. <laughs> just boop the nose there. This is, this is something that, you know, again, I don't know what the name is or anything like that. But for me... <laughs> You know, I'm just a hobby grower. I just, I, just, I just can't get over some of the details of this bloom. Look at those hairs. Look at that. Incredible. Phalaenopsis shilleriana. Dum, da, dum, dum, dum. Whenever you're ready. Whenever you're ready, but at least we're seeing some color. Amazing. And then, there's going to be some color up here as well. All my complex hybrids here. Not all of them, but you know, I used to be able to fit six up here. 
<laughs> um, yes. Yes, now that they're growing well, there's only room for four. And if you heard that funny noise in the background, I have a little bird that comes in here sometimes and teases Siliano. And he's just been and gone. So we're gonna have some beautiful little fowl blooms that I haven't seen in two years. Very happy. So thank you for joining me on the indoor walkabout of my afternoon rounds. I have to check out my area, Iathinthoides, and get those mealybugs just to have another look-see and stretch my back. But yeah, I just thought, you know, I've been so busy with that little, little bit of lecker. When I did my rounds, I thought, I'm just gonna grab the camera. It was super, super windy today. I couldn't film outside today. It just got so bad and I thought, okay, no, whatever. But doing my rounds together with you, thank you so much for joining me. This is After Dark Black Pearl. Magnificent, magnificent. There is absolutely no other way to describe this because the fragrance it has is also magnificent. If you like ginger, that is, and I do. It has a sugar ginger fragrance. But if you get really, really close and you inhale that fragrance, it's like it does tickle the back of your nose. It's, it's like one of these candies to clear your throat and your sinuses. That's the effect it has if you really stick your nose in there and you get a real, real sense of the ginger. Absolutely amazing. I am so thrilled. They're taking forever to open, as you can see. Still some buds to go. And this fragrance is all day long. There is no specific time. There is no hour. It's all day long. And it's a very, very welcome one. So thank you. Really appreciate it. Sorry for the shaky camera. Sorry for maybe the flat effect in my voice. Maybe it wasn't a good idea to take you along. I certainly enjoyed it, and I hope that you did as well. So thank you. Have yourselves a wonderful, wonderful day. I really appreciate it. Take care. Bye.